So I'm here with uh, Stephanie Biagetti, who is the chair of, of teacher credentialing here at California State University, the Sacramento campus. And we're just going to quickly talk about some of the community-based approaches to provisioning teachers uh, in Northern California. So the first question I just wanted to ask you was thinking about the research literature and, and, and your long uh, experience as an educator and now as a leader of those that train educators. Tell us a little bit about what the field says about institutions of higher education, teacher education programs working with communities. I think what they say is that the closer the connection between the teacher preparation programs and the community, the better off both will be for a number of reasons. The local communities want those teacher candidates who understand the context in the community. Right. They understand the parents, the community activities that happen. They understand the students right. and the schools that are in there. Right. And so the more that we can work closely with one another, the better that our teachers are going to be prepared to work in their school settings. Right. And from, from the other perspective, what they want from us okay. is well-trained, well-versed in their community, okay. as many teaching experiences as they can have in that community, as well as, of course, content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and all of that. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, conversation out there about the teacher shortage. Uh, yes. There's a lot of conversation out there about what colleges and universities of education haven't done. You see a rise of places like the Relay Graduate School, you see organizations like Teach for America who bring in folks from outside the community. But what is it that Cal State University does? Like, talk about some of the things that you do as a educator of educators to engage what we do here with with the community in order to increase the number of teachers that right. might work in local communities right. do you work with districts do you meet with them do you are our teachers out in the community in schools before they uh, you know go live as, as full-time teachers <laughs> yes all of that so what we do is we actually start working with our school partners at the high school level and so many of our local districts are creating teacher pathways and so or they have teacher um, activities that go on on their campuses future teachers of America so we assist them in creating curriculum and coursework that is related to those teacher pathways. We see that as step one of recruitment at the high school level for those who might want to come into teaching and circle back to their own so, community. So you're telling me that you are actually out in communities finding folks who are interested in, that are from this community and are interested in teaching in this community. Absolutely. Okay. And we find them at a very young age, at the, at the high school level, but also those teachers at the high school and the administrators who are interested in building some type of teacher pathway. In addition to that, what the California State University is working on at this moment for teacher recruitment is also at the undergraduate level. So what we are doing is we are reaching out to professors across our entire university so that they individually can nominate students who they believe would make great teaching candidates. So it's incredible that you recruit from the very community that folks would stay in. We know from the research literature that a vast majority of teachers are often from the communities that they teach in, which is related long term to them staying in the profession. There's a, a long standing research on that. So then my other final question is about what kind of interactions do you have with districts? What kind of interactions mm -hmm. do you have with schools to ensure that you're meeting those needs? Talk about that community collaboration, that community partnership. So let me give an example of one of the largest districts in our region, Sacramento City Unified School District, and the type of partnership that we have with them and what we've done over time. We meet with them different parts of their district, HR, teacher development, and other pieces of their district at least three to five times each year. Mm -hmm. What we've been able to do this year, because of course they have a teacher shortage and we've expanded our program, so now we need student teaching placements, 
what we've done through their teacher development is they've done the process of recruiting teachers who would like to be mentor teachers. Together, we train them. And in this particular case, we train them in co-teaching. Co-teaching between the cooperating teacher and our student teaching candidates, which research shows when you have that type of partnership, student learning outcomes increase dramatically. So this is the first time in the history of our program that we've had this intensive training with our cooperating teachers. So that's one particular aspect. We're also working on a special education intern program. And so that's a program that we develop over, I would say three semesters, but it's really three modules where collaboratively we recruit into the internship program both their special education faculty and our special education faculty will be teaching in the program. All of the candidates will be hired by the school district to fill their need for special education and, teachers. And we know the shortage in California is especially acute in special education. We know that often Teacher America teachers are going into Oakland, they're going into San Francisco. LA just committed to several hundred more special education teachers. And these are some of the most vulnerable students that we have, but yet we're sending them some of the least trained teachers. Uh, so my final question is, you know, we are not far from the Bay Area, and there's a lot of conversation, and, and I know that there are shortages in our area, but we know we're not far from Oakland, we're not far from San Francisco. Have you, maybe 80 miles, right? About 80 miles from there. Have you heard from those districts? I mean, when, when I was at graduation, I saw maybe half of the folks we graduated were teachers of color. Many of them were Latinas, and I don't know the exact numbers, but have you gotten calls to create these sort of collaborations from Bay Area districts, and would you even be, would you be interested in having those collaborations with those large districts just down the road? So we've had a history in our special education department and our special education program with collaborations in the Bay Area, so this is not something that is new to us. Those collaborations went away when there was no longer a need, such a large need for special education teachers. Now there is again, so we would definitely be open to collaboration in the Bay Area for sure. We hear from districts in the Bay Area when they're in need of teachers. So for example, from about February on, I would get emails and emails and emails. We're recruiting, how can we recruit your students? How can we set anything up, whether it is internet interviews or can we come to our campus so that our students can find out more about their districts and therefore want to teach in their districts. So do teachers have to be externally provisioned, privately provisioned, or can community-based uh, collaborations between districts and universities work? What do you think? I think that there are opportunities for that type of collaboration to work. So for example, I know that through the um, Sacramento County Office of Education, they have a teacher preparation program, not through us, but that doesn't mean that we couldn't be able to develop one on our own. So it's typically through the um, county offices that these types of collaborations happen out in the community. Thank you.